All right, so in the Discord server, someone basically came in and they said, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm fed up. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I just want to uninstall. You know, words to the effect of that. And so, you know, I shot him a message. I said, hey, I want to take a look at your stuff. I want to see what's going on. I want to see if we can identify what's going wrong. So, Grunk, uh, we're going to be watching two replays from Grunk. Grunk, I hope you don't mind me sharing that with, with the audience. Uh, and we're going to be taking a look. So, Grunk's playing uh, the Inca, and he's up against French. And we're going to be doing this at a couple of different levels. Uh, how do you do join the Discord group? Uh, so, Menza, if you... Uh, or R Menza, I should say. Uh, just underneath the stream. So if you if you've got it in full screen at the moment, just just uh, drop it out of full screen. Just scroll down a little bit. You'll see there's some boxes with uh, with words in it like Instagram, Facebook, and whatnot. Just hit on the Discord ones, uh, and that one will invite you automatically to Discord. No worries. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we're gonna go. Oh my! Oh oh my! Lord. Okay, Grunk. All right, I already found what's wrong. We're zooming in too much. I like how it's actually, um, right. I think Grunk's, uh, write that one down, guys. Grunk, you got to work out this camera. Are you playing on a laptop? That might actually be it. If he's playing on a laptop, I think this could be it. If he's using a trackpad. Oh, I feel like he's using a trackpad. See the way that he's moving like this? All right. Well, let's talk less about that and talk more about this. Okay. So, Grunk, first things first. I'm a realist. Uh, so... Idle Vill time. No Vill queued. That's the first thing. All right. So Grunk is going to be doing the typical Incan strategy where you get your house. Uh, and can we see how fast this goes? Once you've restarted your game, look how fast these replays go. I can probably turn that up to... Okay, can't go plus three. So he's doing the right thing. Now, this Llama, he's killed the Llama under the TC. Ideally, what you want to be doing, Grunk, is you want to be killing your Llama over here. Right next to your five villagers. Because as soon as they stop gathering their coin, you're going to delete your llama and immediately put them onto this llama. So that you can get your... So you can get your... Uh, your, your stuff as soon as possible. Um, so, also... So you've built a... You've, um, you've, you've trained. So you've trained a... A settler... And ideally what you should have done instead is hit your big button. Because you got to think about it, right? Your big, your settler, so you just trained another one. So your settler was sitting, or you, was building, when you could have actually had four settlers in that time. And much quicker as well, even, uh, even after this one. Uh, the second thing that I'm, I'm seeing is that you're not herding. So you're herding away from your town center. So think about like, your villages are coming out, right? And they've got to go all this distance. So every second that they're not gathering from a hunt, they are, you know, it, it's it's food that you're missing out on. So it's important that you you go behind your hunt. So what you'd do is you'd grab your villager, you'd right click him over here, and you'd shoot the deer this way. Okay, so see, you've got these, these four villagers. Every second that goes by, one, two, three, four... These are all seconds that four villagers aren't, aren't gathering. All right, and so once again, they're pushing the hunt away. So it's important you get in the habit of doing that. So now we'll continue moving on. We're just going to focus on on the macro. We're not going to really look at the micro. Micro is something that's very subjective. Uh, so already in the beginning, we can see a way that you're able to elevate your game uh, by doing that. All right, now another thing is that you're not rallying your town center. So your town center... If you right click it, if you just grab your town center and just right click like that onto the tree or onto the coin mine, your villagers will automatically go from the town center onto the coin mine uh, or, or onto wherever it is that you want. So that way you could have had this entire hunt under your TC and that way you would have reduced your idle time. You wouldn't have to walk all the way from here back over to these trees. These four villagers over here wouldn't have to go all the way over here. Uh, so... Already, just from, from the beginning, I feel like that's so much to talk about uh, in, in the first place. Um, and so, one of the other things is just when you're in your transition period for Inca, you want everybody on wood. And just primarily because you need to be getting up your cancer houses. 
Uh, so as soon as you hit, I think it's 125 or 135. As soon as you hit that 135, drop them down immediately. You drop these two down basically at the same time. So it's important that you get them down. Uh, and I'm just going to pause very quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is a, a common mistake I see people make. So if we take the value of a shipment for the Inca or for any civilization in the first stage, it's equivalent to 300 resources, 300 wood, uh, three settlers is, is 300 food. And then if we look at the second age, it's 700 resources. Now, there are exceptions to this. As an example, we've got the infinite 600 wood, but some would argue that because it's infinite and you don't have to put 600 wood in your deck as well as 700 wood, you gain an extra slot in the second age and you can also send it as many times as you like. So some people would even argue it's better than 600 wood. But anyway, we'll just go with 700 wood. So what's happened here, you've aged up, you're about to age up and... You could have waited just another 40 seconds. And if you'd waited 40 seconds, you would have had your set your next shipment, your second shipment in the second age. But instead, you sent it in the first age, which means you're missing out on 400 resources. Or I guess if you wanted to send wood, you're missing out on 300 resources. So it's important you wait that extra 40 seconds to send your second shipment in the second age. Now, there are exceptions to this, but for Inca, which is what we're focusing on in this game, it's important that that's the way... Uh, that you do it. Uh, and so aging up, we're aging up with the chief, uh, which is the correct age up choice. Uh, and it looks like we've got a war hut. So war huts are going down. So it looks like you're building a bit of a wall here. You're also protecting this coin mine. So that's really good. I like the, I like the positioning that you've got here. I'm not sure exactly what build you're going to be looking for going for, but uh, some, some people do opt to go for a trading post or a tambo instead of of taking the, the double war hut. So let's have a look at our opponent. Let's see what he's up to. He's got his market ups. He's getting steel traps. Uh, he's been in age two for a while with a shipment and he hasn't sent uh, his four couriers yet. So he's making mistakes as well. They, they should have been here. Uh, they should have been here two minutes ago. They're running late. So let's, uh, let's, let's move it on. Let's focus uh, and, and see what else happens. Uh, this is quite a long game, so we're not going to watch the entire thing. We're just going to focus on the early game. If, As a player, if you're able to master the early game, then it can incredibly boost uh, your your rating just simply because it, it really elevates the, your entire game as a consequence. You nail down that beginning, and it, it will help you so much. So we, we've got really no idea what our opponent's up to. We're just marching into it. We're at seven minutes. So our opponent could be massing musketeers, he could be massing hussars, he could be going to the fortress age, he could be... I mean, he's French, so he can't really be doing much. But we're very blind right now. We've got no scouting. So we're walking into a double racks musketeer, which fortunately your unit composition, it's pretty good against. Especially for French, against French, you want to be making those muskets early because they have the three Hussar shipment. But uh, it looks like our opponent has, has neglected to include that in his deck. Alright, so I might leave it there for this replay. I think that that gives you more than enough for any, any player who's, who's at a similar skill level to really focus on. So the first big thing, herding. Make sure you get those hunts in. Second thing, make sure you've got your town center accurately pinpointed to where you want it to go. And third thing, hmm, what's the third thing? I mean, it's more micro with your llama. You want to put your llama over here. Um, uh, mainly just your canches. You got to make sure your build order is on point. So we've got another game from Grunk where he says he plays a little bit better. So we're going to watch that game as well. Uh, I'm not sure whether he wins or he loses that game, but he he did say on that first game he wasn't playing his best. Uh, and oh my god, <laughs> Grunk, Grunk, this is the this is the classic Grunk zoom in. <coughs> all right, Grunk. So we're against Barbosa ninety eight. So doing the right thing, all onto food here. Perfect. You queue up the first settler. It's a little bit late, and because as Inca, what you want to be doing is move your llama. That's the very first thing you do as, as Inca. You gotta move your llama because it spawns and it blocks all your units. All right, so 
Our opponent in this game is the British. So, Barbarossa, 98. Lads, I'm just going to take a quick sip of pineapple juice. Just give me a, a moment, will you? That is some good juice. It's actually pine orange juice. A lot of people don't know this, but pine orange is like an overpowered combo. So if you've got like, in a team game, if you've got French and Sweden, overpowered. Pine and orange. Pine is like, you're Sweden, French. That's, that's your orange. Insane combo. All right, so we're going to speed it up a little bit. Let's have a look. Let's see if Grunk is still making those same mistakes, even though he said this was his good game. Okay, so again, he's eaten the llama with one settler. So the llama decay rate is 44 food per minute. Every minute, your llama will decay 44 food. It's the same with with any animal, okay? So this this here, this is uh, Freytag. He's not a, he's an animal, but he, he's not someone that you can eat. Uh, at least not yet. And so each animal will decay 44 food per second. Now the llama gathers incredibly fast. It gathers at two food per second compared to a standard uh, sheep, which is 0.84. So three times as fast. So it's important that when you gather it, you want to make sure that you minimize that waste and you also want to maximize the amount of resources you get out of that llama. All right, and again, not uh, not rallying the town center. All right, we, we've over macroed a little bit, but that's okay, that's to be expected. Uh, we, you know, we don't expect perfection. <clears throat> Uh, so, it, and it's something that's quite common on Kanchatka. People forget that they get free tag. They pick up this treasure and they think, oh, it was 20, 20 coin or 10 coin or something like that. Uh, no. So, free tag is not 20 coin. So, the village is coming in at, at, at 236. So, and they're on coin. Why are they on, why are they on coin, Grunk? Oh, were you just waiting for your, for your llamas? I think that's what you were doing. Uh, so, a, a huge, um, yeah, like, not a lot of scouting going on. Forg forgetting about free tag. Sorry, fry tag. Fry tag. Fry tag. <laughs> Alright, so. You stop burning down the town center. So, when your opponent's burning down your town center like that, it's really good. It's a heap of stuff there, uh they're wasting, or a heap of time they're wasting. All right, so we've got 12 idle villagers. Let's see how long they go for. Nine, all right, we're fixing them up slowly. We're moving them onto coin. All right, <clears throat> and we're going up again with the chief. It looks like we are doing some kind of fast fortress potentially. I think we're doing a fast fortress. Okay, let's see what Grunk's got on. Alright, so one's down here, and it looks like he might be sending one over to the trading post. He is. Okay, I like it. I like it. Alright, so once again, not not um not hurting the hunt. And he's going straight for 700 coins. So this is this is the fastest fortress you can get. You can't get a faster fortress than this. And, yeah, it looks like he's got a pretty solid build here. And now going up with the warrior. So, his opponent, Barbosa 98 has only hit the combo stage now. Let's see how many manas he made. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought he'd be doing this. Now, interestingly, he didn't go Virginia Company. He's just using the, the beginner build or Anfangar. So, it's only got 22 cards in the deck. So, I think Barbosa 98 might be a little bit new. Uh, he is up at 652, um, but let's let's keep watching. We'll, we'll we'll make sure that we uh we go through it quickly. So we've got the 600 wood coming in now. Keep in mind you're uh, you're aging up. So once again, uh the the uh, resource value for age three shipments is a thousand versus a hundred. So you know I, I appreciate you're building a lot of canches with the 600 wood that you just got delivered, but it's important to remember that could have been a thousand. Uh, resources instead of 600. Alright. So, aged up at a pretty competitive time before 9 minutes. 
So not bad. So let's let's think about what what could be done better or what what we could be doing better. The most important thing I think that you could be doing better, at least in this game, Gronk, is you need to, you need to have a solid build order. You need to have a, a game plan because it, it looks to me like you've got one. But typically, what we're going to see is some sort of early pressure. And the reason why we're going to do early pressure is because we don't want to let our opponent just do whatever he wants, especially being up against the British. So if we just let the enemy British player just do whatever he wants, well, he's just going to make 100 manners. When I say 100 manners, you know what I mean. It's, it's that 20 manners. So we don't want to let him get away scot-free. We want to let... We want to make it so that he is, uh, you know, at, at least scared a little bit so that he's not just doing his thing. So that, that would be my suggestion. I, I would say... Instead of doing a straight fast fortress, I, now, granted, I haven't seen the strat that you're doing. I haven't seen your build order, so I, I can't critique it. I would just say, generally, it's better to do a semi-fast fortress than a fast fortress. All right, so let's continue. And these replays are so much better when they play fast, hey? Chasky getting a kill on the Ville right there. Some musketeers coming out. The double town center. Very, very greedy for one versus one. Let's see if he can make it work. And just getting up. So that right there, that's our 11th cancher. So, Grunk, one of the things you want to be doing, max your canches ASAP. You want to be getting these bad boys up to 13 as quickly as you can without losing the game. So now we've got a Kalanka going down as well. So the two TCs. So with your town center placement, Grunk, uh, what I would be doing is I'd be looking at the map and I'd say, okay, as an Inca player, what do I want? I want food, I want wood, I don't really want coin, but it's kind of useful. So where can I put my town centers to gain that control? And so the first thing I'd be doing is I'd be looking at maybe putting a town center like right here. I think this is a good spot. So you can put a town center here, that way it's guarding this coin mine and it's, it's guarding these trees. You can herd these caribou next to it. Now, the second place that you could put it, so some people would say, I'll oh, just chuck it in the middle. I agree. I think that this is a really good spot. But the problem is you don't really have a lot of map pressure and your enemy could push out at any moment. You don't really have much of an idea of what they're doing. The last time you saw their houses, they were in age one. And keep in mind, they aged up at six minutes 50. So it's not the most competitive age up time. So your enemy could have like a whole bunch of units right there and they could be here and they could siege your town center down. So your other option is up over here. So you could put your town center like right here. It would be guarding this hunt, this hunt. But it's important. You got, you need to remember that when you're playing the game. So try and think of this as like a as a circle. <laughs> if you spread yourself too heavily, it makes it very difficult to defend. So let's say you did put that town center down here, and you put a town center up here. If your opponent starts attacking you here, you now have to move all your military. Let's say you're camping out in the middle, up over here, and now your opponent starts attacking you down here. Now you got to march it all back down that way. So, what can you do? Another option is that you can put your town center, your third town center, down here. This guards this coin mine, it's got access to this caribou, and it's also got access to these trees here. This is a much safer option, and it allows you to play from the pocket. You can see you're going to have like this little defensive area here. As long as you keep your troops here, your enemy's never really going to be able to catch you off guard. So, that would be my suggestion. Otherwise, you're just, you're, you're losing a lot of potential line of sight coverage, uh, safety for villagers that you could have. So keeping them together like this, there are situations where you'd want to do it. This isn't one of them though. Uh, one situation that you would want to do it if you're playing the Portuguese and let's say you're up against the Lakota and the Lakota age up at three minutes. What do you do as Portuguese? Well, you've got to put your town center, your, your first town center, here it is. Your second town center, it comes out at four minutes and 10 seconds. You put it right down next to it. Because if you move that town center wagon any further than your town center, it's going to get sieged or it's going to get killed. So let's move on. I'm going to take another sip of pine orange. Pine orange is a tier one juice. Oh. Hey Tom, how you doing, man? Not too long for you to get uh, to get your New Year. You're over in Brazil, aren't you, mate? <laughs> I like that Menza. Put in some lime juice. Ugh. 
All right, so now we've got the Huracanas coming in. Sorry, Huracas. <coughs> and looks like we're... Okay, we've hit Cancha Limit now, 11 minutes. Ideally, you want to be hitting Cancha Limit anywhere between 7 and 9 minutes. Depending on the matchup and the game. Oh, wonderful, GLJ. Yeah, we might jump onto it too. Uh, what time? Uh, probably in about uh, three hours, yeah? Two hours? Two, two, three hours? Cran pine juice. Well, I haven't tried that. Sounds good. All right, two hours 30. Yeah, I can do that. All right, so the Harakas are coming in. And we're making Bolus Warriors. Now, Bolus Warriors, I haven't actually seen them since the update. Uh, they're, they're one population now, the Bolus Warriors. So, they've got a ranged attack of 14. They do... So, they're a Dragoon unit. Oh, this is weird. They do bonuses against hand cav and light range cav. So, they win Dragoon Wars. So, they're basically a Corolian. Is that what I'm seeing? Is this an AoE Corolian? With 20% range resist? Yo, this looks good. Okay, Bolus Warriors, do the thing. Show me. I think they've got the wind-up animation though, don't they? So you can't kite with them. I've only got... Oh, they got 14 range. That's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that wind-up. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, it hurts me. Why are they got to wind up? Alright, well... I think at this point in the game, there's really not much that can be said. Uh, just because of... You know, it, it, the, the game sort of gets somewhat intricate. Um, and, and very specific to this game. Here. But, uh... Yeah, I, I think the primary thing that you need to focus on... Okay, so here's something. So you've built a farm. Now, a farm costs 400 resources. That's a pretty big investment. 400 resources, what can you do with it? Well, you can build four settlers. You can almost build another town center. You're 100 wood off another town center. Now, how fast do your settlers gather on this farm? They gather at 0.5 food per second. Now, do you know how fast a settler gathers when it's on a hunt? 0 0.84. 0 0.5? 0.84. I'm just going to do some quick math. It's two, it's four. Minus one. It's a lot higher. And so, because they don't... Uh, <clears throat> now, keep, keep in mind, we don't even have hunting dogs. I don't even think we've got a market. Control W? Yeah, we don't, need, we don't have a market. Alright, so that, well, let's, let's make that the other tip. Uh, build a market, get hunting dogs. Because uh, that goes up from uh, 0.82... Or oh, 8.4 rather, uh, up to, I think it's 0.92. So, what that will mean is that, so the, the point I'm trying to make is, you want to exhaust all of your natural resources, so your caribou, your bighorn sheep, before you exhaust, or before you go on to farms. Now, like everything, there are exceptions. Say, for example, you're against a German player. And the German player is raiding you constantly. It's so annoying. He's coming in with his free U-lands. If that's the case, and, and I'm looking at the game exactly as it is now, I'm saying, all right, if I need to get food, where am I going? Well, I've got a safe food resource right here. Literally on my war hut. So that's where I'll go first. Then I'll herd this over to my town center. Then I'll come up here and I'll build another town center or a war hut to cover this hunt. Then that's only 250 resources that I've invested. On that, and I've also gained a whole bunch of map control and line of sight up here to the north. So it's important that you don't go to farm straight away. You try and stick with your natural resources as, as best that you can. If you've made it this far in the video already, first of all, I just want to thank you for watching to the end. And secondly, if you've got any questions or any comments that you'd like to make in relation to this video, whether you'd like to see more of it or whether you don't like it at all, uh, please let me know down in the comments because this is the first video of this style that I'm doing. Uh, while it is a coaching video, it's obviously not live coaching. It's more of a uh, replay analysis. So let me know what you think. 
other than that, uh, if you haven't already joined Discord, I encourage you to head on over. We've got a lot of great content over there, including my deck picks. So I'll leave a link down in the description for that one. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.